Hello, it's Kelly Bear here. Welcome to my channel and I'm with you today for what I hope will be a fun video. Um, it's something that's been bouncing around in my head for uh, a week or so. Um, and I've just thought, well, let's just make the video because often if I don't strike while the iron is hot or at least it'll still lukewarm, um, then I just end up not making the video. And that has happened so many times with so many video ideas or other people will do something similar and then I don't want to do it because then it seems like I'm copying them or they've sort of done their own spin on it and they've done it better than I think I would so I'm just like shit I'll get off the pot right so that's what's happening today so as you'll see from the title I am talking about tarot confessions my tarot reader confessions and this isn't meant to be oh these are all very shocking and um scintillating and you know it's actually meant to be a helpful video for people that might struggle with their practice or have things that they beat themselves up about their tarot practice and i want to let people know that that's normal and that don't beat you know don't beat yourself up life is hard enough as it is without beating yourself up about over something like tarot cards right so um yeah i just wanted to talk about the things that i do or don't do or struggle with um as someone who has had a channel here um for over seven years and has been reading tarot on and off uh, for over 25 years so um yeah just letting you know that it happens it happens to all of us um so i've written some notes on my phone i've tried to keep them in, a, in an order that makes sense like originally i just sort of verbal diarrhea them out into my phone and then i've organized them into an order that kind of makes sense and um yeah I'm, ju I'm just gonna jump in and the first one is about my my practice itself the practice of reading tarot um, and i've put here i am inconsistent with my practice and i always have been and what I mean by that is that, you know, um, sometimes I go through phases of doing daily draws. Sometimes I go through phases of doing a week ahead readings. Uh, other times I will do month ahead readings or m full moon readings. Like, you know, like a, like a, a routine. Um, sometimes I will, um, you know just what I'm doing at the moment I have just come off the back of a phase of doing lots of like week ahead readings and now I'm in a sort of a just pull when you feel like it maybe daily maybe not just mm, maybe you're pulling three cards maybe one maybe it's a tarot and an oracle maybe it's an oracle and an affirmation deck I'm just going by what I need um, and, and that's fine and by also inconsistent I mean or by inconsistent I also mean that um, I haven't read tarot consistently for those 20 hang on 1996 1997 let's say 97 first so 26 years that i haven't read tarot consistently for those 26 years um what i mean is i i read for a few years and then it sort of petered out a bit sort of reading now and then and then i had a big break from it and didn't read any at all for like three or four years maybe a bit longer and then i've been back to it for uh, to a fairly regular degree since 2012 2013 so about a decade now but in that decade that just passed i have had um you know sometimes weeks or even months where i've not picked up a deck or really had a routine at all just because i haven't felt like it or because there was a panini that kicked off or um because i had been suffering with depression or whatever it is right so and you know what that's fine if you find yourself being really sporadic really sort of inconsistent with your um with your practice that you know don't beat yourself up i know what i like to say now is something i came up with last year is that i'm consistently inconsistent and with that ultimately i still get stuff done <laughs> um so yeah and i think for people who are neurodivergent that kind of becoming um interested in something and getting really excited about it and sort of really sort of hyper focusing on it and then sort of that interest falling away that can be part of that sort of cycle for people um so yeah i i will um i've, I've been inconsistent and i used to really beat myself up about it but now i'm just like I let it go it is what it is i just go by what i feel i need or want at the time because 
you know, it's there to serve me, ultimately, my practice. It's for me. I should clarify, I'm not a professional tarot reader. I never have been. I've never read for people for money. I have read for family, for friends, for acquaintances, and an occasional stranger in a bar or a cafe or what have you. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm. this is coming from a very sort of... Um, lay not lay person what's the term i'm looking for amateur novice just sort of a lay person using the tarot on and off for like you know two and a half centuries two and a half centuries what am i a vampire two and a half decades <laughs> i swear i think i've got my elven character that i'm playing D, D with tonight on the brain who is in fact a couple of centuries old <laughs> okay so that was the first one uh, the next sort of confession I have is I never finish challenges. You know those Instagram challenges, those month ahead challenges, those... <laughs> I I don't think I've ever finished a single one, a tarot one. I've, I've done Mab's Draw Valine, but only because I stuck to like the weekly one, which is like two a week, which is nothing really compared to like 30 days, 31 days of, of drawings. But yeah, I um, I I um, never finished them. That's basically it. I've I've started a many um, uh, tarot challenge from various folks uh, over the years, and I just yeah, I just fall off the wagon. And like pretty quickly, the most I've got is like halfway through. As soon as I like have to do something every day, or I feel like I have to do something every day, I kind of get very there's resistance there. <laughs> my brain likes dopamine not not even likes my brain needs the dopamine to be able to do the thing and if it doesn't give the dopamine the thing doesn't get done or it gets done but it's a really painful process and i mean like it literally feels almost painful um so yeah one of the things i have been pretty good at sticking to is my uh, my uh, my daily offerings to my uh, spirit allies i've been doing that fairly consistently and consistently and even then i have had breaks from that or fallen off the wagon with that on and off over the last few years but it's one of the things that i've been consistently inconsistent with so you know i never finish challenges the only challenge i did finish which was the literary witches project which is a challenge i set myself which was to pull a card a month and read a book from the author the writer that i had pulled from that deck the literary witches oracle and to make myself accountable I decided to make that a public thing where I would research the authors and do a video about the authors and then read the book and it would be a book club for everyone to join in and then at the end of the month myself and Becca over Becca Talks and Tarot uh, would have a discussion about the book, a live chat with people joining in to say what they felt about the book and I managed to stick to it for the entirety of 2020. Yes, that was the year that I kicked that off. I managed to somehow, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> I managed to stick to that project, that challenge that I'd given myself through like one of the gnarliest years um, in in recent history, right? So I, I was really proud of myself for that. So that is one of the few times I followed something through, but one could argue it wasn't like a challenge challenge, like a month. If that, I had to do that in a, like if I had to do it, monthly challenges, basically, I suck balls out, is this what I'm saying. I never finished challenges, so I've done that one. Um, it On the back of that, it takes me ages to complete workbooks or courses, like self-guided courses for the tarot. Um, again, always have. I don't think I've ever like consistently worked through a workbook from beginning to end without going and working on other stuff or reading something else or working through starting another workbook or another course and i've only done a couple of courses the only course that i of the the uh, little red tarot i mostly did most of that and again really inconsistently um and tom benjamin summer school i did that but that still took me like a few months to get through um and i'm very slowly working my way through it a second time because i enjoyed it that much that's no longer available, by the way, FYI. If, um, if you're like, what? What is that? It sounds cool. It, it, it is very cool, um, but no longer available. Um, so I, the thing is, though, I do often eventually finish most of them, 
because I have this habit of circling back around. So I talk, I've spoken about this, token. I've spoken about this in, in um, previous videos where I say that there's loads of things that I'm interested in and that can get a lot. <laughs> um, but I'm generally interested in like spooky stuff and um, arts and crafts and creative stuff and um, you know tarot and witchcraft and so there's a general vibe and so ultimately the things that I, I, I might fall away from them for a while but ultimately I circle back around, I spiral back around and I eventually come back to it and, um, and to finish the thing or almost finish the thing um, so an example of a book that I've had for a very long time Learning the Tarot by Joan Bunning um, when was this published? I've had this a long time 1998 and I think I might have picked it up in 99 or 2000 so I've had it a long time I have worked my way through this bits and pieces of this on and off like I remember back when I first got it and I was all like gung-ho about it with all the exercises and I think I got like I don't know a quarter of the way in and then quit but then I came back to it and I did another bit and then I fell off the wagon and then I came back to it. And ultimately, I think there's only, I don't even know if there's any t tasks, any exercises I haven't done. I don't know if there is. I think I might have completed, hang on, let's just have a look. The nights, yeah, no, I do. I remember going through the court cards with this. So I did eventually finish this, but it took... And I don't mean months, I mean years of circling back round to this. And this is still a book that I will dip in and out of for meanings occasionally, um, or for exercises just because I fancy doing something just off off the, like, you know, and like picking an exercise. There's not all, it's not all exercise. It has loads of different sections. It has sections on cards, meanings, and things like that as well, um, and reading uh, spreads and things. Um, so this is one example of one that, like, took me a month or something probably quite literally to, to work on um a, another one is is that i haven't i have a habit of starting tarot books and then either not not finishing them but not finishing them for ages again sometimes for years so an example of this is marcus katz and tali goodwin's the secrets of dwight smith tarot i have gotten through maybe two-thirds of this book and i haven't finished it and I was really enjoying it, but I don't know. This is my brain, dudes. This is my brain. <laughs> like, but I will eventually finish it because there are other books that I did this with where I finished it. Actually, case in point, um, last month, not last month, we're in May now, aren't we? In March, I finished reading the final third of Camellia Elias's um, Marseille Tarot. Um, book which is I think towards the start of reading that I had read the first two thirds of that last year I think it was around March or April that I picked it up last year and I was all gung-ho read like two thirds of it I don't know I don't know whether I was like well I've had enough of Marseille for a bit like reading about Marseille or whatever the hell it was and I was like oh I should get round to that I can hear them finish me finish me and eventually I finished it and I felt good about it so um this will at some point get finished I do it all the time I do it with fiction as well it's just me and my brain me and my brain it is what it is I've just cut kind of learn I'm just learning as a 42 year old to finally sort of start to make my peace with it because I'm sort of realizing the pennies dropping as to why I'm like this and um yeah I'm trying to be gentle with myself and kind to myself about that because ultimately it's probably the way my brain is wired. So that's that one. Uh, the next one is I don't journal every reading that I do. Um, sometimes I'm really strict and I journal every reading. Sometimes I go through a phase where I don't journal any readings, but for the most of the time, for the most of the time, can I, my what? strong painkillers for the period of pain and again it sort of scrambles my brain a bit <laughs> i um i i need to read what i think oh i don't journal everything see what i mean it already fell out of my brain because i got distracted by it getting dark and i was like oh is it gonna get really like strong rain and then my brain starts thinking about something else and then i forget what it's talking about even though it was mere seconds before so yeah i don't journal every reading but i'm at this point for most of the time where i'm journaling maybe 
half to two thirds of my readings and then the rest are just sort of I let them fly on the wind fly my pretties be free um and they that's either because it's like a quick you know I don't know quick daily draw whether that's one two or three cards or it's just a quick oracle pull you know like it's just or even sometimes I'll do more in-depth readings but I feel like I just want to like let it go you know trying not to sing the song so hard and sometimes it's because I'm gonna be honest I can't be asked I don't want to have to write it all down because it's a really big spread and now I've made a rod for my own back fuck it I'll just leave it uh so that off the back of that I will say my tarot journal is ugly not the actual notebook itself the notebook itself is like it's fine it was a Christmas present a couple of years ago from my aunt it's just a spiral bound I don't like spiral bound I don't like hardback um so but it's it's a lined notebook and so I will use it because it's here and I use the things that I have and it's got a big shiny gold K on it with kites and I don't know if it's meant to be K for kites or K for Kelly or K for both um but yeah I will show you I've shown this in the past so like so for example I left these two front pages his prime example at the front blank because I number my pages so that I can put like important spreads in the front so they're easy to read find rather have I filled this in have I fuck no I have not like it's getting like super dark now so we're just going to flip that round for now because you know you know what we say if you don't like the weather here in England just wait 20 minutes um so yeah uh so I started off the first reading and this is quite neat ish but it's not fancy like I really would love to do all the like photos with the and print them out but like my god that's expensive and time consuming and it's a barrier it's a barrier to me getting the information down right I'm already like struggling to get stuff out as it is so what I would do is I would use different colored pens here I've used black and green black and pink uh purple with a little purple highlighter that kind of thing and then I was doing this thing where I, I list, you know, what the date is, what the time is, what the moon is, what it's in astrologically, what the weather's like, what my mood is, and then what the decks are I'm using. And I've also started tracking my cycle, like where I am in my cycle, my menstrual cycle, just out of, just for extra information. Um, so here's an example, Tom Benjamin's Halloween Icon Suite, which was a, a, an a Instagram challenge. 2021 October 2021 I got through weeks up to week three prompt day 18 and I didn't do those all on the day some of them I like batched some of them I like skip days you know just it is what it is but for the most part it kind of looks like this you know and I'll draw out the little thing and I highlight bits but more recently as I've gone on like I literally just write it all out in so this is like my solar return spread um and I just like scribble it all out in black pen I haven't even gone back and highlighted it the writing is atrocious I am just getting shit I'm just getting shit out like it is messy as all hell and you know what that is that is fine it doesn't have to be pretty and the thing is the reason I because I used to try and do the really beautiful ones with the um you know the photos and all of the decorations and the collage and all that stuff but for like a daily weekly monthly journal that's no good for me it is a barrier to me getting the work done because firstly I'm like oh god it's going to be so much effort for me as someone who lives with an, a condition an illness that causes a lot of like chronic fatigue and by that I mean like medical chronic fatigue I really need to have the energy and the like headspace to be able to do stuff like that then on top of that my the way like my squirrel brain means that I need to find something exciting and interesting and if I feel like I have to do it then that's a barrier to me kind of not wanting to do it like a petulant child <laughs> and so I just made peace with the fact that for my like daily monthly daily weekly monthly reading and I put my solar return spread in here as well because it's one that I'm meant to refer back to I'm going to get onto that in a second I um I just yeah I just I just keep it like this now 
I do have nicer like deep dive reading uh, journals so this one is for the antique anatomy tarot but this is using Dawn Michelle's deep like tarot deep dive and it's got like it's all like a junk journal and it's all like fancy um you know like intros and and things that fold out and all that jazz and it's all very pretty but this is very time consuming and even this isn't like isn't finished like there is like chunks of it you know like i haven't even finished laying out all of like the suit of rods for example i haven't finished laying the suit of rods out so it's but the thing is i know what i'm like i will circle back around and i will come to it and this is more of like because it's a deep dive and it's something that i will refer back to for a particular deck that i really like it feels like the time it's more I'm, I'm literally sitting down to do a deep dive and it feels more like i don't know it's more of a project i think the more that i do these like tarot bound that's it tarot bound journals for specific decks the more i lean towards just getting it out and maybe using a highlighter and some sticking black and some stickers and washi tape down because the thing is i work i you know i'm an artist and maker as my job that's what i do right so i need my energy my spoons and my headspace i need for my work right i need the spoons and to to sew to draw to paint whatever it is that i'm doing so to me spending time on whether that is a bullet journal or a planner or a tarot journal or what have you for me personally is me wasting time and val valuable energy and creativity on something else or even like something that isn't even work related but like a creative project that i just want to do for myself if i'm burning myself out on making my tarot journal look pretty i could have like painted something in or drawn something in my sketchbook to me that's more valuable now i do understand that for for some people their tarot journal is their creative outlet and i know people who are artists who have tarot journals that are also their creative outlet it's absolutely fine you do you i just for my like my regular day-to-day -day, i'm keeping it pretty simple and like i said i do have some slightly more fancy ones but even as time goes on i'm less concerned about them being fancy also um because I'm realising where I want to spend my time and what I want to spend it on. As long as the information is there, I can still refer to it, right? I'm still deep diving. It's all good. So there's that. Wow, that was a real blah, 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 long one. So yeah, what is I've put? My tarot journal is ugly. Pretty journals can be a barrier for me. So uh, the next point to make here or to, to confess is that um, I sometimes or even often depending on what's going on in my life and in my head uh, forget to refer back to my spreads or journal entries on the whole so like you know when you finish a journal whether it's a tarot journal or a magical journal or a journal journal a you know um, I'm, I'm, re I'm not that great at going through them like after I finish them and then writing down anything in the front that would be useful or highlighting and, and extracting that into somewhere else to distill it down into like a book of shadows or whatever i'm really bad at doing that um and also yeah i can be pretty bad at like going back and doing reflections so sometimes let's see if i can find one do ba do ba do trying to find it so for example at the end of this reading i've drawn a line and this was meant to be my reflection space a week later from the week ahead reading but i didn't do it um, but then there are others where I have, so I'm trying to find one where I have for you. Mew, 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 mew. Mew, 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 mew. There we go. So for example, I'll just write reflections and I'll put the date that the reflections, usually a week later, usually on the, if I do my week ahead reading on a Monday morning, I will then on the Sunday night or the f following Monday morning, um, before I do my next week ahead reading, I do a reflections. But sometimes I don't do this. And I think it's important also sometimes to go back and reread your entries, right? Otherwise, you know, actually I'm going to contradict myself. I think it's useful to have them to reread them. But what I'm going to say is further down the road. So there are journals that I've had for a long time that going back, you know, a year, two year, three year, five year, 10 years later, um and i have read them and it's been really enlightening and interesting to see how far i've come but when i'm so close to it i don't find it that useful does that make sense 
So um, for me, the most important thing in the moment when I'm tarot journaling is to get it out of my brain and onto the page. Blah, I'm getting it all out, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, stream of consciousness, whatever it is, what the cards mean, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, that's the important thing. And that's another reason why I don't bother making it pretty, because I am trying to like get it all out. That's what it's there. It's a tool, essentially. Um, so, yeah, for me, I, it, I think it's good to re read them for myself, but for with distance otherwise i still feel like i'm too if i like reread through this when i just finished it i'd still be too close to it i don't know but again god yeah it really is starting to chuck it down so yeah it's good to reread but also it's just important to get the information out there and if you never look at them again you know the number of journals that i have gotten rid of over the years like there are so many journals and sketchbook oh my god sketchbooks and notebooks that part of me wishes i had kept but you know, some of them I hung on to for a really long time and then I just was like, what am I doing? I'm never going to look at them again. And then I've thrown them. <sighs> oh, well, <laughs> it is what it is. Ultimately, it's, it's, it's good to let things go. Um, and like my most favourite journals or my most important journals, I'm looking over a couple of them now, my favourite sketchbooks, I, st I still keep, you know. Wow, can you hear that? I'm in the attic, you see, my bedroom's in the attic. I don't know if you can hear that picking up on my microphone. So there we go. Now we've gotten through the like actual sort of practicey bit, the readings and the the that kind of thing, the journaly things, the frequency, the studyingy bit. Studyingy, that's not a word. Anyway, um, the the next bit is about like the actual readings themselves and like the decks, the tarot decks, the decks. Um, so the first thing is I don't always use a cloth and a nicer setting to do my readings. And I've spoken about this before in the past. Um, if I'm doing a big reading, I will do all the bells and whistles. So when I did my solar return spread, I will lay out a nice cloth. I've got the candles, I've got the incense, I've got the plinky plonky music. I've got it all going on. It's all kind of woo, right? It's I'm, I'm meditating. I'm using my I've got my herbal tea. It's all it's all setting the ambiance, you know, because it's a very big, important reading. Or so it's meant to be, right? Um, but then I've just realised I missed an important point I wanted to make. Uh, but I'll go back to it if I remember. <laughs> Um, but also, um, my week ahead reading, if I do week ahead readings, I will put out, occasionally I'll put out a small cloth, I put rain sounds on my laptop, and I, 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 I you know, I don't do anything fancy, I don't do the, the, um, candles or the incense or anything like that, it's just I've got a nice cloth, and I sort of, you know, still my mind, I write my, like, intro into my journal, and then I do the reading, blah blah blah. Um, if I'm doing daily, if I'm pulling a card for the day, I am just whoop, 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 whack, down it goes. I'm not getting stuff out for like doing a quick three card, to one to three card daily spread. I don't care. Other times I will just be sitting on my bed tossing cards, um, you know, just laying them down on the blanket next to Dr. Nomi over there. <laughs> Um, my kitchen table without a spread cloth and I've said it before I have done readings on picnic blankets park benches bar, bar tops you know I've got decks a bit mucky that way um, yeah pub tables um, office desks um, like all sorts of places <laughs> so the seat of a bus <laughs> or a train like you know just all sorts of random places over the years as time has gone on canteens the college canteen <laughs> um yeah like i i don't i i it's it's just it's befitting whatever the reading is and for me i see it like you know with food i think i've given this analogy before like not every meal that you sit down to are you doing the tablecloth and the candles and the fine china and the, the, the fine silverware and the the crystal glass where and you know the the most beautifully well prepared you know meal um you know you might do that on special occasions for people's birthdays for a sabbat for um i don't know a christmas or a, a, a national holiday or what have you um but you know you probably don't have the time unless you're very wealthy and have like people that can do that for you you're probably not going to have that for every single meal every day right 
and also be, it wouldn't seem special anymore um so um if you uh sometimes you're just grabbing breakfast on the go or you've got like a, a ready meal and you're eating it on the bed with your boo watching a film or you get takeaway i don't know like it's all food right you it's still sustenance and they can all those things can be enjoyable right who doesn't love ordering in a pizza <laughs> as much as having a lovely big like i don't know christmas meal with your family and friends so i see the tarot reading like that like it's befitting what i'm doing with it i don't know um, but what I meant to say with regards to being really terrible at going back and looking at my spreads, this um, this is what I mean with like if you're doing like a weekly or month ahead. But like, and I don't do like tracking what cards I'm pulling. I've done it on and off over the years, but I found it like I just never kept up with it. I found it like I'd forget or I just was like, oh, I can't bothered. Um, but for example, like my solar return spread that I've done this year for my birthday this year, I'm meant to check in every three months to just see how it's gone with like the weaver that I have, um, my card of the year, which is temperance. It's a temperance year for me and the oracle card. And then just to read through the rest of the reading, which includes, um, you know, some court cards and um, some other bits and bobs in there. I should we'll keep saying I'll do a video about that. Um, maybe I should. I've now got a new mic arm, an unbroken mic arm, where I can finally film overhead again. I haven't been able to film overhead for um a, a few months or so maybe i should do that but yeah um i was meant to check in um around the sort of end of april the end of the last month with my solar return because it would have been three months from my birthday and i didn't get around to it because stuff was going on so i was like it's fine i'll do it on the Altona, which was on monday um and then stuff went sideways again and didn't go to plan and so I didn't do it on Monday to be fair to me it was because things didn't I had plans and they went awry but like if I really really wanted to I could have like sat down maybe one other evening this week and gone through it just like said to my husband like I just need some time to just do some stuff but part of me feels like it needs a like a, a, a sabbat or a like tonight is a full moon but i'm playing dnd &D, so i can't do it tonight but yeah so there's the solar return i've got you know my three month check-in and i haven't done it um, and i was really s sort of slack with it last year as well i still did the check-ins but not in the time like it wasn't always exactly three months but again as long as i get around to the check-in at some point within the next week or so it'll be fine it's fine what even is time anyway right so that was one thing that I'd forgot to mention. So going back to like the readings and the decks, uh, my other confession, which I have had people literally have a go at me in comments before, which is so funny to me because like loads of people do it anyway. And I'm going to be able, I'm going to do it because I'm kind of able to do it again now. It's the Ruffle Shuffle and I will not apologize for it. They are my decks and it is mathematically the best way to get the you know randomization in your deck um i think it's somewhere between seven and nine riffle shuffles gets you like a really good randomization um it's not something i've been able to do fully for almost a year because i had a problem with my thumb which is also um threw up the, the fact that i had a different problem with my hand which is progressive but the thumb issue isn't as bad as it was but there's other stuff going on I guess I should be grateful for the thumb injury because it meant that my hand was um, scanned and they could spot what there was other stuff going on in there. Um, but it does mean that I do still also get a hand pain and discomfort. But I can just about on some decks like the Triomphi della Luna, this is my paradoxical version, I can just about get a riffle in, but not all. On the, on the positive spin on that, I've gotten a lot better at overhand shuffling just because I've had to. Um, so yeah, I riffle shuffle. Some people get really butt hurt about it. It makes me laugh because like, like calm down. They're literally bits of card with pictures on. It's fine. You know, um, they're tools. They're there to be used. And I do look after my tools. I look after my paintbrushes. I've always looked after my fabric shears. I've always looked after my, you know, my, my art supplies, my craft supplies. And I, I do care for my decks. I have been quite... I can be quite rough with some of my decks. They've been, like I said, they've been thrown down, accidentally put down in beer and like on sticky bar tops um, and they get riffle shuffled. But for the most part, those are like 
you know, my readily available mass market decks. Am I riffle shuffling my pat, uh, my um, Danilov second edition? No, first of all, because the cards are too long and thin and the card stock's too flexible for me to even do that. But also it's the own, you can't get that edition and it's very special. And I don't, I'm not a complete banana. I'm not gonna ruin, you know, all my decks <laughs> but you know even to me the the triumph della luna is fair game to me because it's it's pretty sturdy it holds up and it can handle it you know you can tell when a deck can't handle a ripple shuffle some decks you can't ripple shuffle because they are too small or the card stock's too thick and the deck comes out really chunky like i really struggle to ripple shuffle my uh, my flaw noir copy of my jean de blais I've seen Tom Benjamin do it with hits, which just impresses me. It, it's like, how? How? Because <laughs> um, that card stock is stiff. But yeah, I riffle shuffle. Um, I don't know why. I know why some people like, I've, some of the books that I've read recently about Marseille, like even Monica Badersky is like, don't shuffle your decks like a, this isn't a casino. And it's like, but you know, like you do you, boo. <laughs> The first tarot reading I ever got from someone else was when I was about 15 or 16 and it was my sister's friend's mum and she read with the Thoth and it was a really old copy. You could tell that deck had seen some action and she riffled the damn thing and she was in her 60s at that point and she had been reading tarot since she was about 12 or 13. And she riffled shuffled and I was like, if it's good enough for someone that's been reading the tarot for 50 years good enough for me so anyway that was a whole thing on like if you are upset that i riffle shuffle my decks don't worry if you've got tarot decks you don't have to riffle shuffle yours my drawing beeswax <laughs> well just let people do what they want to do right like, it's so weird to me when i've had like really some like sometimes really abusive <laughs> messages about riffle shuffling i haven't in a while but um yeah it just always it always confused me like not your deck Calm down. I'm not riffle shuffling like a, a vintage and an, an, an antique like Visconti deck or something. I'm not that silly. Um, another confession. I don't cleanse my decks. I don't waft them through incense smoke. I don't put crystals on them. I'm not a crystal person. I don't lay them out in the sun or the moonlight. I don't like blow on. I don't do anything. On saying that, I've I'm coming round to the idea. And um, I think last, the end of last year, beginning of this year, I did cleanse something, potentially a deck or something else, but I can't remember because I cleanse stuff magically. So I'm like, why do I have a barrier with the tarot deck, right? Like it doesn't make sense. I'm like, make it make sense. I think because when I first got back round into tarot in about 2012, 2013, I was coming from a very psycho-spiritual model, which I do still use, uh, but other models have come in. And so, and I was very sort of hardcore atheist um, to the point of being a twat about it. And I was just like, no, it's all just nonsense. And as I've come back to my magical practice and re-embraced that animism side of things, like I'm like, the, it's almost like there's this tiny little layover from my uh, from that that has stopped me from from doing my tarot decks. But I seem to recall, and my memory is so bad, me putting a deck through smoke either at the end of last year or beginning of this year, and I can't. My memory is so trashed, guys. I can't remember shit. So yeah, I don't cleanse my decks, but I'm open to doing it at some point in the future. And I don't know. I would probably do incense and like an incantation or something. And maybe like do a sigil that it can go on top of overnight or something because I'm not really in a position to be able to put my decks in moonlight or what have you because I don't have proper windowsills that I can put things on. So I need to find another way of doing it. And I don't really do crystals. So I'm not doing that. Um, but yeah, so like never say never, right? So I don't cleanse my decks, but I'm thinking about it. But then I'm like, but how often do I do it? And which decks do I do? And then it becomes like, oh, I'm overthinking it. Um, okay. Another confession, I still refer to tarot books, as in like when I'm reading tarot for myself, I will, ref if I've got a deck that has a guidebook, I will often refer to the, if I'm doing like a weekend reading, I'll be like, what does the Raven's Proph Prophecy book say about this actually? In fact, I'd like to know, because it's the deck that I'm using right now. Or I will um, refer to, you know, like for, I'm just look, I've got a couple of decks out here, books out here. 
so uh, I love reading Marseille so one of the books that I refer to quite a lot is the Marseille Tower Revealed by Yoel Bendorf but one that I've really been enjoying is the is the little the Squid Cake Marseille uh, tarot guidebook that comes with the mass market version I'm loving this little book it's like a little condensed little bit of a moose bouche of a little book of a book um, and it's it's great I have it next to my tarot trolley so I can just grab it and like just do a quick little boop, 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 boop. So I'm loving that. Uh, two decks for like more Smithway, uh, two books for more Swift, Swift, shitting hell, can I not speak today? Oh, I'm also, I've got this biro here because I was going to show you, this is the pen that I've been using in my journal lately, just this crap pen. And it's old and it's gloopy and I hate it, but again, I use what I have and I will use the damn thing until it's gone. I, I would like to switch eventually to refillable or um, pens, uh, so I'm not throwing away the casings, but I think I had I've bought these or had nicked these from work years ago and I've just that's why they're all gloopy anyway um I'd love to go to like fountain pens and like refillable um so that I'm not so I'm not so it's that you're just buying ink but at the same time I don't know how quick I can write with a fountain pen and again you need the paper and it's smearing and it's a whole thing so I think my 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 um what's the word my compromise will be refillable getting like metal bodied pens and getting refillable insides refills that um are recyclable i need to do some look at, looking into that but squeeze me um the smithway books uh, 78 degrees of wisdom from the late very li recently late great rachel pollock rest in peace my dear um and another one that i really like is uh, the complete guide to the tarot illuminati by kim huggins this is the separate guidebook that you buy for the tarot illuminati but it is like smith away and i really like it so those are two books that i've referred to on and off over the years a lot and you can tell because i've i've tabbed them so i can get to the bit that i want really quickly for the, for the section that i want so that um and then on the following in that i still get stuck when i'm reading so i read i will read what the tarot book in like refer to tarot books and again it's not every single reading that i do but like fairly often i'll have like i will have like a, a few like tarot guide books on my desk just to like just out of interest to see what they say but on the back of that sometimes i do genuinely get stuck with a reading um and I think it's that's okay, like even if I've been reading all this time, because I might not have asked, use this deck in this particular combination for this particular question. They're all different. And especially when you read Marseille in the open style, you know, sometimes it takes a while for that puzzle to come together. Sometimes I need to leave it out on my desk or on my tarot trolley or on my dressing table. So, you know, depending on what I'm working, where I'm working on the, the day. And I, I, I will like have to walk away and come back to it later in the day or the next day and see what's coming to me sometimes messages or meanings come through um after you've had a bit of time to sort of stew and steep those those cards together in your head um and other times you just get straight up stumped right and that's okay like i struggle with brain fog um so that can cause problems sometimes where i get frustrated where i like i know i know how to put it together but my brain is just not doing it <laughs> for whatever reason um and other times i'm just like I'm trying to do a reading but i'm not in the right headspace and i you know really at that time i should be not doing the reading um and there's a lesson in that as well like learning when not to pull the cards um so yeah there's that uh, so I've got my next confession, which is even though I enjoy learning all the extra stuff that goes with tarot, like the, um, you know, her possible herbal associations, colour associations, um, kind of, I'm not really into astrology or Kabbalah, but I have learned a little bit about those over the years just by osmosis and just by like the fact that I read tarot, um, symbolism and all those kinds of things, numerology. I love learning all of that, the elemental stuff. But um, all of the esoteric stuff, all of the like occult stuff that's been bunged on top of the tarot, like the Kabbalah, like astrology, that I, as much as I enjoy, I think it's interesting. I, a lot of the time, don't bother with it for readings. I am looking, as Tom Benjamin, he says he's looking to do um, uh, exoteric readings, not esoteric readings. I like that. And that's that whole idea that he has with like tarot on earth. It's about practical 
um, useful readings that answer the question. So for me, it depends on the, the on the flip side of this. I'm going to say it depends on the kind of reading that I'm doing. So for my solar return spread, that's more of a like deeper, um, reflective, deep dive, psycho spiritual kind of reading, right? So for me, the things like maybe some of the astrological stuff or any of those other more like esoteric things they have a get they get a bit more play in a reading like that it's a large spread it's meant to last a whole year it's one that i need to keep going back to and digging into it's like a um you know a, 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 something to dig the layers out of right or dig down the layers of um whereas my week ahead spread three cards boom 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 i just want nuts and bolts i don't need no fucking you know and i know some people use the astrology and that's going to inform them but i don't know enough about it i'm not interested in enough about it and it just seems really overwhelming to learn about it so i, I don't like i don't care i don't care what moon is in whatever hoo-ha like i just want to know what the actual cards themselves are saying as the cards would have been read in the old style in the traditional style back in the day before any of the extra floof was stuck on top of it right so um it depends it depends on the reading it depends on the occasion it depends on the deck that i'm using but like 765 to maybe 75 percent of the time i am just doing you know like balls out just spit and sawdust type readings <laughs> I don't and and then there's a little bit of the time where I'm getting really fancy and deep with it if I'm using the thoth yeah it's getting pretty esoteric you know because it's all in there you might as well fucking use it so there we go um and there's no right or wrong I'm not saying you're right or wrong for using all those things but just for me I I, I find I found tarot more accessible when I started using Marseille and pip decks and when I realized you didn't have to worry about all the extra stuff and that it should be fun and enjoyable and it should be used when it is relevant or it is needed and it isn't always relevant or needed for me so there um and finally i would just like to say that um for those of you uh, watching and who may struggle with uh, anything that i've mentioned here don't beat yourself up about it right tarot is a tool right and if the way that you're not using it isn't useful to you then either you don't use it or change up how you're using it um try something new don't beat yourself up about it it's there as a tool it's 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 there to help you and if it's not helping you you can unpack that and, and work out why that is or maybe it's just not for you maybe you're more of a a, a Lenormand reader or you want to learn to read a sort of playing cards in a sort of carta old-fashioned cartomantic fortune telling style maybe you want to try kipper or minkiate which i am aware is like an extended tarot uh, maybe you want to try deste or um, sibylla and then there's other forms of divination you've got you know various types of runes runic systems you've got omens you've got dice casting you've got scrying of all sorts and like mirrors and crystal balls and flames and candle wax and tassiomancy so you can read tea leaves or coffee grounds you know pendulums i use a pendulum there's all sorts of things out there you can do charm casting again i've got my own little charm casting set that i've been slowly putting together i added a couple more at the weekend actually because my my neighbor she gifted me a bag of charms that she wasn't going to use for any of her craft projects and a couple of them worked very nicely for my for my for my charm set so i popped them in there um, so yeah like you know don't force it though right so if it's not working for you try something else or tr like within the tarot or try a different cartomantic system other than tarot or maybe you're more of an oracle person i don't know or just try a different kind of divination altogether or maybe give it a break and come back to it because you know maybe it just might be where you are at the time um but yeah don't beat yourself up about it um and I've, i'm i'm having to learn with the way that my brain is wired that i i need to be kinder to myself and sort of not um uh yeah so these were these were confessions of a sort but not really like they're things that i think people think are bad like riffle shuffling or um you know whether or not oh, i didn't even touch on reversal sometimes i read reversals and sometimes i don't more often than not these days i don't um, which is interesting to me because i went through a phase of really always reading reversals but yeah 
that's another thing so yeah anyway this has gotten way longer than i wanted it to be i didn't really want it to be longer than half an hour and it is now 50 minutes go figure there we go that's my videos for for you always long oh that was it another one i realized i've missed i have some decks i barely use and one of them was going to be the um oh, <laughs> the uh cthulhu dark arts cthulhu tarot which i've i've barely used i have used it but i've barely used it and another one which i've tried reading with which confuses me so and you can see it isn't it isn't in order but is the um the navigator's tower of the mystic sea which i won off of brian cormac carr a few years ago in a competition he ran but it's it, it, yeah it confused me um and um i feel now that i know a bit more about um both that i'm like i should pull this one out because i had put this aside and i was like when i learn more about because i feel like this is stothy am i right um, it looks stothy to me from like what I'm, you know, what I remember. So now I like, I pulled it out. I was like, oh yeah, I should keep this out actually. So I have decks that I hardly use because sometimes I pull for my, 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 um, my trusty familiar ones or I just get stuck in a rut or I just have so many that it's really difficult to use all of the regularly. Obviously that's just the nature of it, right? If you've got loads of decks. Um, so there we go anyway it's just nice to have the option uh i'm gonna go because this is getting ridiculously long tarot confessions of your own down there in the in the in the comments would be awesome i want to know if you struggle with some of the same things that i do um or um if you have some other ones that i didn't mention and uh yeah or if you want to do a video of your own tarot confessions i feel like the, the video title was a bit clickbaity but um I am confessing to you things that I feel like some people feel like they can't admit maybe um, or that they struggle with but don't want to say if they're quite far down their tarot path like myself being like over a quarter of a century into a tarot practice <laughs> you know so yeah it's all good it's okay just just chill uh, so yeah thank you so much for your time for taking the time out of your day to watch and or listen to me ramble on I really appreciate I really do and I really appreciate the comments um, I was a bit slow in getting to some comments recently because I had so much going on I, with my shop drop I just was, wasn't able to sit down but I finally managed to sit down the other day and, and reply to all of the comments that I had and I, I do appreciate them all so thank you so much you take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.